Welcome to Bench to Bedside, a weekly series of live conversations about recent advances in cancer, from the research bench to treatment at the patient's bedside. And now, your host and the director of the University of Kansas Cancer Center, Dr. Roy Jensen. Welcome to Bench to Bedside. We have a special show for you today. And Auntie M, as you've probably figured out, we are not in Kansas anymore. Uh, we are live in Seattle at Fred Hutchison Cancer Research Center with Dr. Garnett Anderson, uh, Director of the Public Health Sciences uh, Division. And Dr. Anderson is an accomplished public health researcher and biostatistician. She has helped design, conduct, and analyze uh, data from large population studies working with team members to make breakthrough discoveries that have helped save hundreds of thousands of lives and billions of dollars. Dr. Anderson, welcome to the show. Welcome to Seattle and Fred Hutch. Well, thank you for joining us. And uh, first of all, could you tell us a, a little bit about the space that we're in? Well, this is our visitor center in the Arnold Building of the Fred Hutch campus. It highlights some of the research we do and some of the breakthroughs that have, uh, our faculty have accomplished. And it also gives our visitors a chance to say, why they're here and what, what is it about cancer that brings them to this place? So much of your career uh, obviously has been dedicated to public health science. Uh, why is public health uh, so important right now? Well, public health um, interventions have been responsible for some of the largest gains in longevity and health throughout our history. Um, and part of that is because the questions we ask in public health science are really relevant to a broad population. Um, we, we ask, we've done work in clean water and tobacco control and infection control and that is relevant to, to many, many people. I think the other part about public health research at this point is that we're a very data oriented group and quantitatively inclined. So in, these, in this day where we have data coming from all kinds of sources that could give us clues on, on, on many aspects of health and disease, I, I think these tools are particularly relevant. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're just joining us, uh, we're live in Seattle at the Fred Hutch uh, Cancer Research Institute, and we have uh, Dr. Garnett Anderson as our guest. And as usual, we have uh, Pauline Horton here to take uh, your questions. So please share this link with people you think uh, would benefit from this discussion, and use the hashtag bench to bedside. So you've been a central figure in the Women's Health uh, Initiative. Could you tell us uh, about that program? I'd be delighted to, and stop me if I go on too long. Um, so the Women's Health Initiative was started by um, Dr. Bernadine Healy when she was named as the first woman director of the National Institutes of Health. And um, she launched this as her signature pro um, project at the NIH. She looked around the various institutes and found some questions around women's health that had been languishing, never got getting the support they wanted. And she packaged them up into this one rather ambitious project. Uh, and the, the, the crown jewel of it was a, a randomized trial that was asking three important questions for prevention. Do menopausal hormone therapies reduce the risk of coronary heart disease and provide overall benefit? Um, would a low-fat diet reduce the risk of breast cancer and colorectal cancer? And do calcium and vitamin D supplements reduce the risk of hip fractures? So this was all put together, and then a parallel observational study of over 93,000 women uh, was uh, launched. Uh, together, 40 academic centers around the country recruited 161,000 women to be in this study between 1993 and 1998, and we're still following over 70,000 of those women today. Wow. So, um, you know, one thing that uh uh, people uh, talk about is, is the expense that it costs for us to do biomedical uh, research. But something that's not emphasized enough is uh, what are the benefits to society? So could you tell us a little bit about how much this study uh, that you're engaged in has cost and then what are the, the benefits to society? Yeah. So I think you're actually referring to one of our trials, it's our hormone therapy trial. Mm -hmm. um, so I need to say a little bit ab about that. It was two trials. Um, estrogen plus progestin for women who had an intact uterus and or had not had a hysterectomy and estrogen alone in women who had had a hysterectomy. And that's because we don't give estrogen alone uh, to women who still have their uterus because it increases their risk of endometrial cancer. So there were two parallel trials. 
And our estrogen plus progestin trial was stopped early in 2002 when our independent monitoring committee said, whoa, whoa, there's a lot going on here. Mm -hmm. And in particular, they saw an increased risk of breast cancer. We, as I, um, as I indicated, the trial was designed to look at the bene to find benefits for heart disease, but we always expected from prior data that there might be an increased risk of breast cancer, but we thought it might take 10 to 15 years to see it because we thought it was so small. But in fact, it showed up very powerfully within five years. So that's why the trial was stopped. In addition to the fact that we found very surprising increased risk of heart disease, stroke, and blood clots. So the trial was stopped. We continued to monitor those women and report on it. In the process, I mean, there was a very big result in the, in the media. Women got that information and made changes in their, in their use of hormone therapy across the country and, in fact, around the world. And people, multiple people have published on the fact that hormone use reduced by 50% within a year. And others found through our cancer registries that breast cancer rates went down for the first time in history. So a young researcher here um, in um, health economics did an economic impact analysis of that trial, looking at how many breast cancers, cardiovascular diseases were prevented by women go stopping using those hormone therapies, and also took into account the benefits that were going away for hip fractures, et cetera and then did a cost analysis. And he found that the reduction in hormone therapy use and the lower rates of these diseases and the treatment that goes along to it resulted in a net benefit for our country of over $35 billion. Wow, that's amazing. Now, to go back to your question about the cost of research, the cost of that trial in the equivalent $2012 was $212 million, I think it was. Wow. So it's a very expensive uh, enterprise. But clearly, 150-fold return on investment. Yes, that's pretty good. Yes. So, what studies are you eager to see uh, unfold as the um, as this landmark study uh, goes forward? Well, we've got several ongoing. Um, we have a a trial of physical activity in older women. We have a trial of multivitamins and cocoa extract supplements. Hmm. Um, a, a novel uh, uh, question. We have a new study of sleep, which is we're finding is very important for health. And then I have a study on cancer survivorship, which is looking at uh, what are the challenges and, and issues that cancer survivors face in their older years. Our women right now are between the ages of 75 and 101, and, right. and they have unique challenges. Mm -hmm. So um, as a public health scientist, uh, what are the biggest issues and challenges that you see in cancer uh, prevention. Well, and actually, the prevention itself, as opposed to the research, we ha we know a lot of what what we can do, but sometimes I feel it gets drowned out in the in the variety of data that's out there and opinions that aren't based on solid evidence. Um, I I view dietary advice a little bit like childbearing mm. or child rearing. Sorry, um, you can find someone out there to back up your opinions and whichever mm -hmm. way you want to go and, and that's kind of true with diet we really need much more solid evidence um, and and our group here is really trying to to, to push that forward so there's so much going on right now in uh, cancer research across a broad uh, number of fronts what are you uh, most excited about in, in the population health uh, arena? In population health arena, uh, more broadly not my own research, um, the, the availability of data from new sources are, are providing a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. and I particularly think of um, the sources from the immune system and the microbiome. Mm. Um, together, mm -hmm. we, you know, we've found that um, infectious diseases can cause cancer and uh, we also know that our immune system is important to treating cancers. We're learning that more, and it may be important pr to preventing those. So I'm really excited about the idea of bringing these two pieces together. With the idea of we'll understand a more about how some cancers actually start, and uh, if there are other ways to prevent them. And the HPV and cervical cancer is a, a poster child for that kind of work. And I think it would be great to see it in other 
for other cancers. Absolutely. So Pauline, I understand we have a question uh, from our audience. We do. We have one question from jo Josh Belsman. Where can people get accurate information on hormone therapy and other controversial and confusing health issues? Well, that's a really a good question. The, the National Institutes of Health often have um, re results from their, their key studies on their website. We certainly have some on our website. Um, and then the, the professional groups, um, so, um, often the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force, they give excellent uh, summaries of the data and uh, publish the, that very widely. And I find their results highly credible. Well, thank you, Dr. Anderson. It's uh, been a pleasure uh, being here in, in Seattle, and uh, we're so thankful that uh, you uh, stopped by uh, today to be in our program. Uh, that is all uh, for uh, today. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't encourage everybody to cheer on the Jayhawks at Final Four weekend, and uh, hopefully next Wednesday at 10 a.m. we will be recovered enough uh, from that weekend uh, to uh, put on another uh, bench to bed uh, side session. So thank you very much. Uh, have a good day.